According to National Geographic, wandering off trail is the number one reason, ahead of injury and bad weather, that adult hikers require search and rescue. In this video, we're going to get you ready to start practicing the art of land navigation so you never become one of these statistics. Hey everyone, this is Justin with the Ready Life channel. I highly recommend that you learn everything you can about the art of land navigation. It's an important cultural skill that we need to keep alive beyond the smartphone apps which may or may not be available depending on uh, service, battery life, natural disaster. Now in a previous video called The 7 Deadly Mistakes Hikers Make, I showed a cheapo compass. That really isn't the way to go. So we're going to go meet up with my buddy Caleb and he's going to show us a little bit more about the right compasses to use and how to use them. This will be part of a series on land navigation with more coming up soon. If this video is helpful, please like it and subscribe if you'd like to see more in the future. Now let's go catch up with my buddy Caleb. The first thing you really want to look at before you go anywhere is you want to assess what direction you're coming from and a starting point. So um, for instance, over here where we are, uh, if we had left from home, we'd want to say we're going from home to this specific area and we'd want to establish our cardinal directions. So for instance, if I'm going north, south, east, and west, right? And you know, for instance, I can look here up at the sun, it's a little past noon and what we're seeing is it's going down, rises in the east, sets in the west. Um, the next thing after that that you want to do is you want to look at having an actual compass with you. Like I would say if I wanted to go to that mountain, I could follow the general direction of the sun, but I wouldn't want to say that, you know, for me to get over that mountain to, you know, my friend's house, uh, 50 miles that way that I'd follow the sun to get to their house. Unless I actually knew the terrain that I was moving through. Um, the first thing that people should know uh, when they're getting into land navigation is first, where do you buy a map? You know, and then how do you have an adequate compass that will actually help you rather than just um, send you off into a direction? Now, um, you had made mention before that you had a, a compass, I think it was from a previous video. It had a little uh, dial on top and it was kind of free floating, it would move, right? Yeah. If I know that my trail is in a general direction and you know, it's it's cut into the path and I, I kind of have like a, a very set way that I'm moving, then that compass can actually help you. But if you were looking for uh, more of an off-grid situation where you're just bushwhacking and going out there and you have just a map that you're looking toward and you want to establish what we call an azimuth line, okay, or uh, a degree by which you travel, all right, you would need something akin to like our, our A10 here. Right, and the A10 here is just a standard base plate compass. What I like about this compass is it's cheap, it's affordable, you can get at REI for $20, and you know, you can whack it around a little bit. It's just a good starter compass. It also has on the side, kind of like our scale, okay? So you can see like, for instance, one in 2,500, one in 50,000, one in 10,000 uh, 10, there. Okay, and then we also have kind of a ruler which we can use on our maps. When you first start out, that the compass itself has a red arrow. That red arrow is supposed to be indicative of the northerly direction. So the way that we normally adjust that is we'll move our compass until the red arrow matches with the floating magnetic arrow that we see there. Um, aside from all of this, the last thing I want to show you is that orienting arrow. That's the arrow or uh, direction of travel arrow that you're going to be moving on. So say I want to go in that direction. If I want to orient my compass properly, I'm going to move that red shape okay and i'm going to orient it to that magnetic needle because these are magnetic compasses okay and i will follow in that direction and we can see here right if that's north that's south okay then i'm traveling in a southeast direction and it's a specific degree as well because you can see the number here so what we have here is our Kamanga compass all right this is a standard issue military compass that they use in for instance the army all right and these are really nice too because just like the base plate compass, there's a ruler on the side here. All right, if I'm on map and I want to draw a line, I can use that. All right, we also don't have that red shed. Okay, these compasses are a bit different. So we have here, we have our, our, our ruler line. We have our siding line. Okay, so if I wanted to sight in the direction with this specific compass, all right, I would lift it up as so, and I would look through that siding line and I'd match it up. You'll notice on this compass as well, there's this little magnifying glass. I would mark it right there on the top, lining up with the top of the compass, and it would actually help you to look at the specific degree. So these compasses are extremely accurate, all right? And they're used for military operations and whatnot. Okay, I mean, I generally would say, use this, you know, if, if you're more experienced and whatnot, but don't use it if you're just starting out. Start with that Sunto. Now, going back to the anatomy of this compass, we have the, the uh, sight line, we have the ruler, we have our rotating bezel, 
okay? And you can also see on the top of the rotating bezel, this little kind of light, uh, light lime green line, okay? These are actually uh, night sights. So during the day they absorb light and at night they glow. But these compasses are bomb proof. Um, they're used in all sorts of extreme environments and whatnot. They are the standard issue uh, compass that the military uses. Um, they're called Kamangas. I bought this one for about $80 online. The first thing that we have to know when we're uh, using our compass is how to hold it. First, we're gonna hold our compass flat in the general direction where we wanna go. If we hold our compass flat, that magnetic needle is going to float freely. If my compass is not flat, it's gonna stick to the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take that rotating bezel ring and I'm going to turn it until the red magnetic needle is in the, the red shaped house there on the inside of the diagram. You can see on my orienting arrow, I have to go in this general direction. I have a white line here that I align with my orienting arrow and it'll tell me the general direction. Now I have 140 and 160 here and we know this is 152. So that's 152 degrees bearing that I'm traveling on or uh, 152 degree azimuth that I'm traveling on. That's also my general direction if you're talking about your cardinal directions with east and south. So I'm traveling more south than east, but I am traveling southeast. So for instance, say I want to um, go off trail, okay? I would know my position, I would look around, I would see any um, specific terrain features. I, I could see, for instance, uh, I could take even a flag or a scarf or a, a bandana that's really brightly colored from my pocket and I can hang it up in a tree so I know exactly where I am. Then I'm I could take my compass and I could point in the direction of where I wanna go. I could align my magnetic needle to that red shed, right? And I can know I'm traveling on a 234 degree azimuth, okay? I'll go in that direction as far as I want, and then if I want to go backwards, I just subtract or add 180 degrees to my uh, to what I have. So if I want to go back, I would say 234 minus or plus 180 degrees, and that would actually give me the opposite direction back to where my signal or my terrain feature was and take me back in that direction. The reason why I say 180 is because if you look here on your compass, all right, there are 180 or 360 degrees on the compass right there. So regarding, re regardless of where you are on the compass, if you add or subtract 180, it'll take you to the opposite side of the compass. And so we have a, a general idea too of a marker. If for instance, you wanna use your compass, but you also just kind of wanna explore an area, um, you can again, take that flag, you can hang it up in a tree. And as long as you're exploring and you can see visually that flag, you'll know how to get back to the trail as well. Ooh, good, a marker, that's yes, what that's called? Yes, right, and so you can go, for instance, do an area recon if you'd like to do that, you know, or, or, or go out and, and just explore the general environment, a flag marker, however you want to call it. The last thing you want to note, too, is uh, when you're traveling on a bearing with your compass, all right, for instance, say I'm traveling here at our 134 degree bearing, um, you'll generally want to step with your non-dominant leg. So our dominant side of our body tends to pull us in a direction. So for instance, if I'm traveling in this direction and there's a tree or a bush in my way, I would go along the left side of that tree or that bush instead of going around it with my right side. So you'll find over time as you're traveling with your compass, your body's gonna start to wanna lean towards that and you'll actually lose your bearing unless you're constantly staring at your compass while you're moving. Okay, the last thing I wanna point out too when you're traveling with your compass is, say you find your degree and you're gonna go in a specific direction. Look at that degree, make sure your compass is flat Okay, know and orient your compass to your body and then cite something that's very visual that you can see that you know for sure that's the direction of that bearing. Like a landmark. Exactly, like a landmark or a terrain feature, however you want to call it, right? So say we have like a really bright red flag right there. Well, then we know that that really bright red flag is at 142 degrees. Well, then I'll cite it. I'll hold my compass. You could even hold it up to your body like that and kind of look if you'd like, or you can hold it in front of you however you like. Okay, and you'll know where you're going. Once you get to that landmark, if you want to switch your azimuth or your bearing, then you would just reorient. So I have a metal, a metal knife. Now say I were um, using my compass and trying to figure out which uh, direction I'm going and I, and I orient it. Now you'll, you'll see as I put my metal knife towards the compass that the magnetic needle is swinging. And that's because the compass is magnetic and it's responding. What we want to do is we want to make sure that we have at least a foot or longer distance between any metal objects towards your compass, right? If you're trying to get a specific degree or if you're trying to find a specific direction, you could be calculating specific uh, azimuths. Um, any metal present will throw that bearing off. Um, another thing you want to think about too is when you're storing your compass, okay? So storing your compass, uh, normally if you store it near metal, okay, over time, it will actually affect the ability of that compass to maintain a proper bearing, 
right? So it'll actually throw it off. So you'd have to re-magnetize it. Now I'm not an expert on that. You'd have to take it into an actual dealership or wherever they make the compasses to manufacture, and they'd have to re-magnetize it for you, or you just purchase a new compass. The last thing that you'll see too is uh, some compasses have water on the inside of the bezel. Okay, compasses that have a bubble floating in them that actually throws off the needle as well. So we know that once there's an air bubble inside the compass, we generally don't want to use those compasses anymore. Generally, when you're carrying a compass, you want to make sure it's around your neck or somewhere accessible. You don't want it flying all over the place. Mm. If I'm walking with my compass and it's flipping and flapping, okay, say I want to make sure it's in, in, the, in a place where uh, I can use it. I want to keep it in either our right or our left breast pocket. Okay, so you just keep it in there and when you need it, you pop it out and you orient. Okay, if you try to keep it in the off pocket or in some other, uh, some other place that you can't necessarily access it when you need it, um, it might do a variety of things. There might be uh, some sort of metal nearby that affects it. There might be some sort of, uh, it might hit something and it might shift the bezel, you know. So generally, you know, buy a good compass enough that the bezel ring isn't loose, you know. But you want to make sure that it's close to your body enough that you can actually reference it when needed. Another thing that, um, that uh, people will do is they'll also have a, a navigation pouch or an admin pouch that will have a whole bunch of navigation tools in it, such as their, uh, their map and their compass and any sort of like um, map drawing implements or protractors and whatnot. So you can keep your compass in there, but you just want to generally want to make sure it's accessible. Okay. When is the best time to learn how to use the compass? Would it be like when you're out in the middle of the wilderness? So the best time to learn is at home, buying it, talking to a professional or reading a book or reading up and doing a little bit of research and then going out and trying it perhaps at a local park or behind your house or you know somewhere on the street right you really want to get used to this before you take it out and you, you get yourself lost based upon you know self-teaching or whatever and you'll notice that I also talked about um, professional help so uh, look for some sort of instructor or even a YouTube video so this was a good start to directional navigation in the next video we'll talk about how to use maps so you can more precisely navigate the land Subscribe to be notified of the next video or check back. Thanks for watching the Ready Life channel.